Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part three of my Flash tutorial, where I'll teach you everything you need to know about Flash to be able to do cartoon animation. But in this presentation, I'm going to cover layers, symbols, using the library, and how to convert image files into vector art. Well, this is artwork that I actually drew inside of Illustrator, and I'm going to take it, copy it, and paste it over into Flash. I'm going to create an ActionScript 3 file. You can see that the size of it's 550 by 400, which was a little bit smaller than the image that you just saw. I'm going to paste this on the screen, and I'm going to paste using AI File Importer so that I can keep everything as vector art rather than have it come out as a bitmap. Then I want to align it to stage, and before I do that I have to group everything here. Come over to alignment, I'm going to align to the left edge, and make sure you have a line to stage set up, and I'm going to align to the bottom edge. Then I can come in here, modify, and ungroup everything. I'm going to click here just to make sure that that worked. Okay, super, so we got that done. Now I'm going to show you how to actually import a graphic. I'm going to do that inside here by going into the library and then going File, creating a new symbol, and this is going to be a graphic symbol, not a button, not a movie clip. We'll get into those at a later date, and I'm going to call this Biz Woman, and then I'm going to come up here to File and Import import to library and I'm going to find my GIF image that I have here and that GIF image is going to show up here in my library. I want to drag it over, try to put it in the center of the screen just like this and now I'm going to actually convert it. See I'm going to, this is the symbol that I have here and I drug the GIF image over into that and you can actually see that I'm working with that and not the GIF image itself. Now I'm going to convert this by tracing it and turning it into vector art. It's real simple to do, just click on model Modify, bitmap, trace bitmap. Now you could sit here, there's a whole bunch of different options you can play with. I'm going to keep everything, I mean, it's pretty much this is a tool that you have to play with until you get your vector art as nice as possible. And of course, your minimum area, the smaller and smaller you make this, the more exact it's going to be, but also the more complicated the vector art's going to be. So you want to try and keep this as large as possible while retaining that, the view that you want. And then you just click on preview. To me, that looks pretty good, so I'm going to say OK. All right, great. Now I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to get rid of this excess white space that surrounds the vector artwork. Switch here. Come in here to magnify. Switch back over. And get rid of any residual garbage that I don't want to show up in this vector artwork. So, got rid of that. I'm going to zoom back out. And everything looks pretty nice in general. I'm going to jump back over to the scene. That's where, the, where I'm going to actually be working with these images. And now I can take this vector artwork. I know this is vector artwork, but I can take this vector artwork. But first what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in to show frame. And I can take this vector woman right here, drag her onto stage, and I can transform her, increase the size. And you can do this with any of your symbols. The way symbols work inside of Flash is if you change anything in the symbol library, that's going to affect every single item. But if you change symbols that are on your stage, those are called instances of the main symbol. You can change those in multiple different ways, and it will not change the main symbol. And if you work with symbols inside of Flash, it's going to save you an immense amount of space. So you better get used to working with symbols inside of Flash. So let's take this lady, we'll put her up here. See, I double clicked on that. That would allow me to change the entire symbol, but I do not want to do that. So I'm going to go back to scene and you can resize, you can change the color. A lot of people don't realize you can change the color of symbols inside of Flash. And I'm going to show you exactly how to do that without affecting the main symbol. So let's come over here and draw, bring in another, for instance, of the businesswoman. Shrink this down because she doesn't have a shadow. I'm going to go modify and I'm going to flip this horizontally so that the shadow makes sense. And I'm going to come in here and I'm going to rotate this lady so that her shadow works. Now, the thing that a lot of people don't realize, and this is a little bit off kilter, but this is more to show you how this works. What a lot of people don't realize is you can change this color without affecting the other symbol. And how you do that is you select it and go into properties, and then you can go to coloring effect right here. And if I want to make this lighter like her shadow would be, this is exactly what I would do. I would come in here and manipulate this, and this is going to affect the instance, but not the original artwork itself or the original symbol itself. And if you want to create new symbols, of course, you just go into library, and you can either go new symbol, just like that, and remember what we did previously, or you could say insert new symbol that way, or like we did before, file import to stage. I'm going to import this again. I'm going to say don't replace. 
And I'm going to get this image right here. And if I want to convert it into a symbol, I can just hit F8 or convert to symbol, just like this. And those are the different ways that you bring symbols into Flash CS5 and all versions of Flash for the most part. Now I'm going to come in here and I'm actually going to delete this. This isn't a very nice and neat file because absolutely everything is on the screen all at the same time. And in Flash, you're going to work with layers. You're going to definitely want to work with layers. See, all of these different art items that are on your screen are all on the same layer. Well, it's very easy to put them all on separate layers by just selecting them and then right clicking on the screen and hit distribute to layers. And you can see it'll take a second. And there you are. Now everything is being distributed to a different layer. And you can see if I select the different artwork, this layer only contains that man and woman. This contains their shadow. This contains that woman. Well, let's go in here. You should also name your layers and you do that real easy. Just double click man and woman. And if I wanted to actually come in here and take this shadow, because it would make sense that the shadow is actually there with these two people, what I would do is just copy this. So I'm over here where the shadow is. I'm going to copy it. Then I'm going to jump back into here. And I'm going to hit Edit, Paste in Place. Now they're both on the same layer. And I can come in here and actually right click on this and delete that layer. So now the shadow and the woman are, and the man and woman are all tied to together. And that makes a lot of sense. You can also see that if you scroll down, there's that shadow. And of course, you'd want to have all those things separated onto different parts of the screen. And you may also find that you would like, like this is a background and this is another background. And well, that's actually the arrow. But you might actually want these two backgrounds, three backgrounds actually, to be associated with each other and, and held in the same position. So again, it's going to be 11, 13, and 14. Well, one thing you could do is create a folder and you could name this background. And then remember that's a background. We can drag that in. You see it indented down there. That is not a background. This is a background. So drag that down in there. And 14 is another background. So we can drag that up and you can place it also in the folder. So there's another different way that you can create and manipulate and keep everything organized inside of Flash. And if you actually select that folder, it's going to select every item that is inside of the folder. And now another thing you want to do is, you probably can't tell this, but this is actually where, well, what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you something I didn't show you before. I'm going to come up here to view and click on rulers. You see right here. And actually you can drag and drop a ruler down. But if you look here, this is actually where the top of your stage is. Now I'm just going to make a statement that you do not want to change that fact. So that would mean that in the movie, there's a possibility that this top part would show through. If you want to make sure that does not occur, what you need to do is create what is called a mask. And we're going to need to create a new layer up here. And we're going to need, the, in Flash, it's kind of weird. Whatever a mask is over is what will be shown in the final movie. It's kind of the opposite of what you would think. We're going to need to create a rectangle. I'm going to draw a rectangle here on screen. And I'm going to want to give it a color that is very uncommon and it's very unlikely that I'm going to actually use it. So I'm going to use a green, which is common. Well, then I'm going to want to align it. Again, I want to make sure align to stage is selected. I want to make it the same width as the stage and I want to make it the same height. I know I could have hit this. And then I want to align vertical center and distribute horizontal center. Now that mask is completely covering the stage. All the other artwork, once I change this into a mask, is going to disappear. I just go down here, click on right where I created this rectangle on its own layer, and I'm going to click mask. And now that I've created this mask, it's only going to mask this first layer. So what I need to do is come down here and select all of the other layers and folders and what have you, and drag them up and put them right there. Now everything is going to be masked off and any area that lies outside of the stage I can guarantee will not show up in the final movie. So there real quickly is a full explanation of layers, symbols, how to use the library, and how to convert image files into vector art in Flash. So we covered a ton of things and for the most part in the rest of this tutorial I'm going to really heavily focus on animation. So if you have any questions or comments leave them in the comment section below. Till next time.